There are several ways of loading data into Azure SQL. One of them is using an external storage uh, such as BlobStore. Now Anna is here today to tell us how to do that and show us a little demo on how that works. Today on Data Exposed. <laughs> Hi and welcome to another episode of Data Exposed. I'm your host Jeroen and I'm in the studio today with Anna here. Hi Anna. Hey Jeroen, thanks for having me. Sure, you're always welcome. <laughs> and um, so we're going to talk about something specific which is talk talking about loading data. So loading data is something that's familiar to everyone that has ever worked with databases, right? Now when we come to the cloud, is there anything that changes here? Is there anything that I need to know that might be working differently or new challenges that present themselves? Sure, yeah. I mean, there's certainly new ways you might be getting your data. For example, right. it might not be stored somewhere on-prem. It might be stored somewhere in Azure. Right. Um, in this example, we want to take a look at if it's stored in Azure Blob Storage. How can you get that data uh, that might be stored in like a .dat file or some other format into uh, Azure SQL. Okay, cool. Well, um, let's just get started and show show it how it's done. All right. So what we're going to use today is an Azure SQL notebook. Um, so you see, I'm connected to uh, the SQL kernel and then attached to my Azure SQL database. And uh, what we're going to do here is uh, try to query, try to import some data using bulk insert, something probably our SQL gurus are very yep. familiar with. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try to access it. Now, when you want to access uh, these different types of storage, you have to have access to that, right? Sure. And you can do that sometimes using Azure Active Directory, using some sort of shared key authorization. And mm -hmm. here, we're going to use an shared access signature. Or right, an the SAS. SAS, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into walking through these steps. Mm -hmm. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a table and schema. We all know in order to insert data, we have to have somewhere to insert that data. Of course, otherwise it goes nowhere. <laughs> yeah. So in this case, we're uh, creating a table called store returns. And then we're going to create a master key. And we're going to use this master key so that we can create a database scope credential. And it appears I already have this one, so that's fine. We'll just use that one. Sure, as long as you remember the credentials, you'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now is kind of an interesting part. We're going to get a shared access signature from that blob storage. So okay. you can do this using Azure Data Explorer or the Azure Portal. Um, but you'll have to acquire that signature first, that okay. SAS token. Mm -hmm. Um, now, a few things, this, since this token is going to be uh, blurred out in the video, yep. uh, so people can't access my data, uh, there will be a question mark at the beginning of that SAS token. Uh, you need to remove that. So that can be something to get uh -huh. tripped up on. Okay. Um, Good so to know. I'm going to go ahead and do that and create that shared access signature SAS token. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is create an external data source. Now, if you've used some of the more recent versions of SQL Server, you've seen something similar to this to access things like Polybase. Yep. Uh, this is a little bit different, but the concept is the same. We are uh, creating an external data source called Dataset. Uh, we're specifying its blob storage. We're specifying the location and that credential we just created. Okay. So, okay. So we use the credential now to basically link to the to the external source, right, and make sure that everything works. So is there anything, that I, anything specific I need to know about this command here? Yeah, so just like the question mark in the SAS token is a good question. Um, this one, the location doesn't have a trailing uh, slash or hyphen or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, so just make sure you remove that because that's another thing that could potentially okay. trip you up. Because it would just give an error and not work. Yeah. Assumedly. Okay. Exactly. Good. Uh, so the final step is we're ready to go ahead and bulk insert a single file. So I'm going to kick this off, and uh, then we can talk about what's happening. Right. So there's a lot of comments in here, right? It's a pretty lengthy comment. So can we just command? I mean, uh, can we just talk about what you're doing here? Yeah, exactly. So there's a few things in here, and I wanted to add some comments so that you can get insight into how uh, a few tips, very basic tips on how you could potentially make this run uh, faster. Uh, so if you're doing much larger data imports or bulk loads, you sure. can get the best performance. Yep. Um, so the first one is I'm setting no count on. And this can basically reduce your net 
network traffic and mm -hmm. there's some more info there. Uh, then, you know, just to review what we did, we're going to bulk insert into that store returns table that we created in step one. Yep. And then we have to specify uh, what blob and container, and in this case, what file uh, we want to insert. So that's okay. what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're going to use that data set, data source, the external data source right. the one that we, we created. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, specify a few other things. Uh, now, if possible, uh, loading in batch can help. Okay. Um, especially when you think about chatty applications, um, if you can batch them, that will definitely increase your performance okay. by reducing network traffic. Uh, and then finally, uh, tab lock, uh, which can just help create less that goes into the log during this insert operation. Cool. So there's things I can change to make sure the performance is the best as, as I can. Yeah, and there's a ton more things you can do to increase the throughput you okay. get here. There are other tools you can use, like. Azure Data Factory or even Azure Databricks to get data right. in here. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is just one example. So this has completed. So we can just do a quick uh, select from that table and see how much right. we imported it. It was about empty a before we started. It was empty. Mm -hmm. um, and so we see we've we've brought in almost three million rows. Uh, so yeah, so now you've seen how to import a file from Blob Storage into Azure SQL Database. Right. Well, thanks for showing us that. There's, of course, several ways of loading data into Azure SQL, one of which is now using the, the external data source um, from Blob Store. So there's more uh, options, more, more choices to make. But hey, this is just one of them. So I hope this was useful. Uh, please like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.